Born and raised in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Joshua Peters is currently the second assistant principal, second violin of the Montreal Symphony Orchestra. But this week, he's back home in Winnipeg as an integral part of this year's Agassi Festival, joining an all-star roster. Uh, he played on the festival's opening night program. He also hosted pre-concert chats Saturday and he'll, today, tonight, he'll be hosting one. And he sat on the Sunday morning roundtable discussion at McNally yesterday. And he'll be performing works for violin and piano by Richard Strauss and Serbian-Canadian composer Anna Sokolovic tomorrow night. Joshua Peters is here for another Birchwood Jaguar 107 Live. From the Classic 107 Studios in downtown Winnipeg, 107 Live for Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance. Joshua Peters, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me. Have you have you been here before? I've never been here before. Oh no. my gosh! Well, welcome. I mean, thank you for having me. Well, because we, we know each other so we do. well. We've we have played together. We played together. We've competed against one another. Yeah. I wouldn't say against. I would say with each other <laughs> of various things. But hey, Joshua, welcome. Uh, so Doris McClellan, you won 2014, and then uh, E. Gray, the Eckhart Gramatic Competition, National New Music Competition, you won in 2015. And you won in 2016. 2014. 2014. 2014. 2014. I was oh, okay. 2014. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah. That's cool. You know, whatever. Anyway, so know the you're doing an amazing. You're you're doing amazing things right now. So you're you're in uh, Montreal right now. How has that been treating you? It's good. I started playing with Montreal Symphony in December. Congrats! And it's been a uh, really a real privilege to play with them. Uh, I I know a lot of people ask me, well, do you want to play more solo music? Do you want to play more chamber music and more orchestral music? And I never understood why I had to choose just one. So yeah. the the best thing about having an orchestra job is that I can play here, play chamber music with the great artists that the Agassi Festival has come in, and I also get a half recital on Tuesday night, tomorrow night. That's so exciting. So solo rep, chamber rep, orchestral rep, you're getting the best of all worlds. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing here at the festival, like how you're so involved this year. I am. I'm, uh, I'm surprisingly involved. And... Uh, <laughs> The reason I'm at the festival this year, not, I was invited by Paul Marlene, but uh, one of the funding models that helps you know young violinists or instrumentalists come to festivals like this across Canada is because of the Canada Council's Musical Instrument Bank. Right. I play on an instrument by uh, Jean-Baptiste Villon, made in 1869, and a bow. And the Canada Council helps fund festivals that allow the Musical Instrument Bank winners to perform at them. So... Oh. I am doing, that is why I am here playing a lot of different concerts. Um, and you're, on, thing, go you're on the inside cover of uh, this year's program. So I didn't, I didn't I make the program. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, continue. And uh, another th great thing about this festival is they are um, paying homage to the Canada 150 this mm -hmm. year by playing 15 Canadian works on the festival. And I think I'm playing four of them. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. Yes. But I mean, as the Eckhart Gramatic competition winner, like it, that's something that we have to get used to. You know, totally. I mean, we should be playing as as representatives of Canadian classical music. We should be representing that. Exactly. It's a good type of typecasting. Excellent. So, I mean, tell us what the programs have been like so far. So you were on the opening night and tell us a little bit about what happened. I mean, I heard it was fantastic. Yeah, we started off by actually, I guess I played five Canadian pieces. Uh, we started <laughs> off with a performance of a piece by Karen Sunabaka. Mm -hmm. that, you know, we vocalized. You know, that's not my thing, but I did... It's a challenge. It's, it's called shh. <laughs> and, uh, and played a bit, and uh, I got to play Eine kleine Nacht music with uh, Martin Beaver and oh, uh, wow. Paul Marlene and Graham Oppenheimer, some other artists. It was a lot of fun, you know. Uh, we didn't rehearse that much, but it felt great. It was fresh and it was alive, and I thought it was really good. And then um, some... The various artists of the festival played various influences of on Canada. There was uh, performances by Jessica Linnebach, um, some by the pianist. You know, a great opening night. Great opening night. And so you've also been very much involved in these pre-concert talks. So offering perspective on the repertoire? Or? A little bit. Actually, these pre-concert talks are hosted by Andrea Rutuski. Okay. But uh, she is an amazing interviewer, yes. like yourself. Oh, that's very You're, kind of you. Know. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And she talks about the concert, but also there are pre-concert fanfares that have some of these Canadian works on them as part of that opening to the concert. So there's pre-concert fanfares at 7 o'clock with the new Canadian work and hosting by Andrew Rutuski and a guest for uh, talking about stuff. 
you know, right. and then uh, the concert itself. Well, what is coming up for your your kind of half recital? Well, it is not a kind of it is a half recital tomorrow. So you're playing Strauss and Anna Sokolovich. I mean, there to think about that pairing. I mean, what what drove you to choose the Strauss? This I've never performed the Strauss before, and a while ago, you know, settling into my orchestra job, you know, getting used to that kind of schedule, I decided that, you know, when I was asked to play this recital, I would say I'm going to play this piece and then figure it out later. And I had already played the Anna Sokolovich. So it's a piece that I've played and a piece that I haven't. But what I'm finding in rehearsing it is that they don't have much in common with each other musically, but somehow they pair really well together. Okay, so tell us why. It's like, like celery and peanut butter. It's Oh, uh, ah, maybe, excellent analogy. Like that, yeah. Yeah. So what what is it about this the the Strauss and the Sokolovich? So Strauss, you know, super harmonically like variant, like lots of iridescence in his harmonic language. And what about the Sokolovich for for our listeners who might not be necessarily as familiar with her music as they would be with Strauss's? You mentioned that she's a Serbian Canadian composer. Yes. Um, the Balkan influence is very strong in her music. Um, this piece doesn't outwardly say it. There's nothing program notes about exactly what the Balkan influence is, but with that in mind, you can hear that, whatever that is. Okay. You know, and... Um, People will just have to come tomorrow night to find out. Yeah, it's... Uh, she has a distinct voice, I think, as far as Canadian composers go, that is worth hearing, and it is unique, and is hard to describe. Mm. Well, she's kind of an enigmatic human being as well. So, I mean, mm. perhaps her music deserves the same characterization. Well, friends, we are in the studio currently with Joshua Peters, a violinist who is very much involved in this year's Agassiz Festival, born and raised in Winnipeg. Now he's doing things all over the place, but particularly in Montreal as the assistant principal second violinist in the Montreal's Orchestra, Chamber, mm. or orchestra uh, yeah, the Orchestra, what? Symphonique, Symphonique de, de, Montréal. Symphonique de Montréal. Thank you. Yeah. It's Monday, <laughs> and is it's it? been a long okay. time since I've seen you. You know, so yeah. uh, this is a Birchwood Jaguar 107 live, friend. So, which means that we we're gonna want you to you know play a little bit. How would you feel about that? All right, I brought my fiddle. You brought your fiddle, and your beautiful 1869 Jean Baptiste Viom violin with bow. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so what are you gonna play? All right, I'm gonna play a piece actually by my dad, <gasps> one of the Canadian composers who is also here, by the way, back from Toronto from the su for the summer. That's Very true. He teaches at York University, but you know, for the first time this year. And um, this piece is called Baryon Dance. It's a really fast, fun, uh, kind of spiky piece for solo violin. It's one of the pieces I've already played, but it's sort of a good example of what these pre-concert fanfares are about at the Agassiz Festival. So it's about three and a half minutes long. It has a jazzy section. It says Jazzy à la Stéphane Clapelli in the middle of the famous jazz violinist. And mm -hmm. there's some slow sections, but it's mostly a really rockin' rhythms. Well, Joshua Peters, who you can hear tomorrow night at the Eckhart Gramate Hall at University of Winnipeg as part of this year's Agassiz Summer Chamber Music Festival. For more info on the festival and the rest of the program, visit agassizfestival.com or, of course, you can go to our website at classic107.com. Joshua, play us some of your dad's music.
voice work for solo violin for Menoff Peters, Joshua Peters, his son, also on his own, a fantastic violinist, award-winning, currently working in Montreal, but Manitoba boy, welcome back home. Have fun at the rest of the festival, Josh. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. For more info on the Agassiz Festival, agassizfestival.com, or just head over to the Eckhart Gavante Hall tonight to hear Joshua talk about some great Canadian repertoire or to hear him play tomorrow night some Strauss and some Sokolovich. So looking forward to it. And that does it for this episode of Birchwood Jaguar 107 Live. 107 Live is Classic 107's intimate concert series, brought to you by Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance.